China already has a very clear monopoly on the world's rare earths and lithium production. They control the global battery market pretty much. However, they have just found a new element in China that increases their dominance and it really ups the game for China. This is all a little bit scary, to be honest. Here's what they've just discovered within their own country. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. Great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Got to say a big welcome to all the new subscribers. Welcome to all of you. Welcome back, everyone else. Thank you to our Patreons. If you'd like to be a Patreon, I'll put a link in the description below. China has discovered a rare earth element set to transform battery technology. Why will it transform it? Well, I'll explain that in just a second. The ore contains niobium, which is a metal crucial to the steel industry, but more importantly, it's known for its superconducting properties. Now, there isn't much of this in the world. However, China has just discovered a large resource of it. Niobium is a strong and silvery metal, according to interesting engineering, that is extracted from the mineral columbite. Used in alloys for making parts of jet engines, rockets, niobium is also an essential component in semiconductors. Though, here's the issue. Right now, or previously, it was pretty much only found in abundance in Brazil and Canada. But Chinese geologists under strict orders from the Chinese government, no, I didn't really say that, did I? Have found a rare earth iron ore with niobium in it in the Bayan Obo mining district in Inner Mongolia. Now, apparently it ranges in size from 20 to 80 centimeters and it contains barium, niobium, titanium, iron, and even chlorine. It's the 13th newly discovered mineral since the establishment of China's nuclear geological system 70 years ago. And the geologist said in a press release by China National Nuclear Corporation that there's actually quite a lot of it, enough for them to be able to potentially transform their battery industry. Around 85 to 90% of niobium in the world is used for iron and steel production as a form of niobium iron. They still can increase more than 30% of strength by adding 0.03% to 0.05% niobium. So just by adding a tiny, tiny fraction, 0.03% of niobium to steel, you get high strength steel that you see in cars, right? However, because it's not cheap, a lot of manufacturers don't do it. But just by adding this minuscule percentage to your car that you manufacture, you can potentially reduce the weight of that car by around 5% and increase the strength by 30%. That is huge. But why is this actually significant to China? Well, one, China has the world's fastest growing automotive industry and it wants to take over the global automotive industry. It's planning on doing so. That's why Europe is freaking out right now. Niobium is a superconductor with exceptional current conducting properties at low temperatures. It is also widely used in areas of medical diagnosis like in magnetic resonance imaging or MRIs and nuclear magnetic resonance or NMRs spectrometers for spectral line analysis. The newfound discovery of the niobium means that China may not have to import niobium in the near future which would save them a lot of money, but it also means that they can use it more in their automotive industry and in their batteries. The country imports 95% of its niobium requirements, said the South China Morning Post. The most significant discovery in China since niobium in China is used in the steel industry commonly, and all of it has to be imported. Depending on the volume and quality of this niobium, it will make China self-sufficient and it will make them more powerful and give them reliance on almost no one but themselves. And the other thing is, a lot of people believe that China is planning on potentially moving away from lithium batteries to something even better. The Brazilian metallurgy and mining company, a company specializing in the processing with application and application of niobium has in the past partnered with the Chinese steel industry, but there's a growing interest in niobium 
technologies for lithium batteries. According to a Chinese report, CBMM has partnered with Chinese researchers, some of the biggest ones, some of the biggest companies, and manufacturers to improve the technology. Tiago Amaral, the manager of the environment and technologic support of the CBMM, said that China is the world's biggest steel producer and consumer, and the niobium technology fits very well in this aspect, and it's with its new trend of electric vehicles, with trying to make them lighter, and therefore make them more efficient and cheaper to produce. Niobium gets its rarity from the property that it's a fairly dense element and that its occurrence in the Earth's crust is valued at only 20 parts per million. The mineral ore has already received its classification from the Commission of New Minerals, Nomenclature and Classification of the International Mineralogical Association with an official approval number. Now, niobium is used, like I said, in lithium batteries, but only to a small degree because it's fairly rare and it's expensive. But now that China has discovered its own source, it can potentially increase the energy density of its batteries by around 5 to 10% based on some experts' estimates. Now, this doesn't sound like a groundbreaking change, but if you think about it, if you can decrease the weight of your car by having high-strength steel, at a lower price, and then increase the energy density of your batteries by even a small amount, this would mean you could potentially increase range by 10% with almost very, very small costs. This is yet another way that the Chinese government and Chinese car companies and the Chinese automotive industry plan on, well, laying the smack down on the global automotive engineering industry. Really, This could actually mean better products from China, better cars. But it does also mean that their dominance is very likely to grow. What are your thoughts on this? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching.